Those vegan guys. I thank you. Hello, my loves. It's your standard kitchen vlog. Um, I had I had a, a bit of a morning, um, emotionally speaking. We'll get to that. And um, I just thought, well, Paul, darling. If you're feeling like this, which is a kind of regular thing, it keeps coming up at the moment. It's because of what's going on in the world, obviously. Um, if I'm feeling like this, some of you are too. So let's talk about stuff and try and kind of make some sense of it. Because I just can't sit there with stuff going through my head all the time. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, for the first time ever, I've actually written myself a little um, note. Because I'm like, this. these are the things I'm thinking about at the moment. These are the things I want to talk about. So, following on from the vlog the other day that I did about um, what Will Smith did at the Oscars. I have to say, in all honesty, that... I'm actually pretty appalled at how many people have tried to justify it, uh, saying um, Chris Rock got what he deserved. Um, and I know that a lot of that sentiment comes in large part from quite personal feelings about it, people who are suffering hair loss and ha imagining themselves in that situation. Um, or, you know, um, it, just people who are imagining themselves in the situation of, of something being highlighted uh, in that way. So, and I get that, but if we all constantly judged every issue, incident, on how we personally would feel about that because of our personal feelings on that, it's it's a bigger picture than that. This this was watched by 15 million people worldwide, um, and Will Smith still has a, a, an incredibly large um, fan base, including a lot of young people. So, you know, I know people might disagree. In my opinion, violence is not the answer to words. It's ridiculous, really. And there were other ways to deal with that. But also, for the record, I had no idea, and apparently Chris Rock didn't either, I had no idea about um, Jada's alopecia. Absolutely no idea. I don't follow her. I would have to follow her to know that. Um, I don't like read gossip press, which is what something like that would uh, appear in. I kind of follow politics and stuff. Anyway, it bypassed me completely. I had no idea. I think she looks incredible. And to every woman out there who suffers from hair loss, your hair is not you. And I know it's very easy for me to say as a male sat in my kitchen, but I, I, you women are beautiful full stop and women with short hair i mean can we just acknowledge that demi moore in gi jane looked incredible can we acknowledge that jada the other night at the oscars looked incredible women with skin heads look incredible again that's just my personal feelings and i understand that uh, some people are very sensitive that, uh, about that i think you rock for the record so yeah uh, i'm i'm still and I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit disappointed in will smith because you have to think about this socially globally what message did that send to the people viewing it well lots of different messages but the fact that he then went on to accept an award to a standing ovation that's kind of ludicrous 
keep that in mind because what I'm about to say is not in any way justifying what Will did. However, I watched the trailer for King Richard and it was very easy just from the trailer to get the character that he'd played for how many months. What I will say that as an actor myself who when playing a part tries to get into it that's how you uh, maybe that's why I'm a good empath because you try and get into the mindset of the character you're playing now I do that in general with people anyway so I once at college was in a production of Jim Cartwright's Road I played Joey and brother and someone else Joey messed me up physically messed me up I got really ill and pale and scabby, I'm not even joking. Dark character to play. So I get it. Doesn't justify it though. You were, when you were sat there, you were just Will Smith. Um, and I do kind of wonder whether he was hitting Chris Rock or August. I think the guy was called August that Jada had a bit of a thing with. I wonder. Sometimes we carry things until we no longer do. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I was sat thinking about that this morning and just kind of, and just the general state of the world and then that this this thing on top of it and the repercussions and how much it's being discussed and all of that and how it's become this main focus thing and, and I know I'm talking about it myself. Then I started thinking about Easter. Because of course Easter is coming right around the corner and um, it's a it's an awful time really is Easter uh, pretty much like every other time on earth for the poor animals but Easter it's the lambs and the the fact that chicks little baby chicks are used in kind of Easter decorations and Easter bonnets and fun things and oh look at the little chick and it's like you do know that they're minced alive if they're male don't you because that's a thing they come out of the shell and if they're males they're put on a conveyor belt into a huge mincer and minced alive no use are they they don't lay eggs. But stick them on the bonnet, Johnny. Hmm, <laughs> Easter, what a lovely time. Let's go and, oh, I did a meme. I did a meme once. I did a meme. Let me see if I can find it, and what I'll do is I'll put it up whilst I read it. You know what I mean? First, we'll go and look at the spring lambs as they jump and run in the fields. Then we'll go to the man who kills them for us and buy one of their little legs, which we'll roast at home and eat. Yum! Afterwards, if you're a good child, you can have an Easter egg made with the milk stolen from baby cows who were probably killed by the dairy industry. Then you can play with your fluffy Easter chicks, modelled on real ones which are often ground alive by the egg industry. Easter darling so yeah just a little um, perspective about uh, Easter and, and about how you know uh, animals are kind of the Easter bunny and the Easter chick and all of that are revered and celebrated and used as decorations and when the actual reality of what happens to those animals is as you know as vegans abhorrent and if you don't know that's what happens look it up it's it's not a it's not a vegan exaggeration or vegan propaganda it's just facts of the industries that you buy your uh, flesh and secretions from so will smith easter the world this is the like I say, this morning I had a bit of a moment. I had to watch a couple of YouTube videos, um, like um, 
you know, random acts of kindness, humans being good to each other. And there's one, and it's like a, I don't know if it's at like a, a football match or something. To be honest, it looks like a multi-story car park and there's people on every floor looking out and somebody drops their hat and they all kind of, I know this is gonna sound ridiculous. They all throw it up to the next guy. It's all and up and up and up until the girl gets her hat back. And I cried. I cried because of how simply and beautifully a huge group of people had worked together to benefit one. And then I thought, Bal, you're having one of your heavy moments, love. That's what they are. It's heaviness. It's the weight. It's feeling petrified and powerless, of course. General symptoms of living in today's society. And then all the, you know, these things that kind of impact you in different ways come and pile on top of it and suddenly you're like really heavy and you know yeah so I acknowledge that I acknowledge that today I started the day feeling really heavy and realized okay Paul do a vlog then talk about it because you're feeling like this so, and it's hard to know what to do with that weight. All we can really do is talk about things and then try and put them in a box somewhere because it's not our issue to carry, Will Smith. Other than sharing memes and, and posts and, and such, which still, for some reason, even when they're fact-based, anger people rather than educate them there's nothing I can do personally right now sitting in this kitchen I, about what's going on in Ukraine that whole thing the fact that that this whole thing is happening in 2022 astounds me but it shouldn't should it because Yemen Syria Palestine just because they're not kind of on the news constantly doesn't mean they're not going on and the, it, it, and again wait like WTF are we doing what are we doing and I'm sorry to say it but how much of it can be linked to toxic masculinity including Will Smith was Nazism violent right wing folk the Proud Boys but men don't like it when you point it out I, I, as, I, as a man physically I know that we need to own it because you can't change what you don't acknowledge and there's that many people fighting against you know the, the even the fact that toxic masculinity might exist that it still carries such weight in in society that it still saturates so much around us And another controversial statement, I kind of, I don't justify, but I understand why men are wary of it because they feel like they've been, they've had to own so much already over the last kind of century really. You know, how things have changed so dramatically and women are equals and, and and you know a lot of men can't handle that fact because they've always had this 
many of them were raised with the, you know, the man of the house and blah 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 blah. Still, coffee today, until it's acknowledged and owned, it will never change. And society won't change, so it has to be owned and acknowledged. Um, so right now I'm going to talk uh, just a little bit about um, fasting, which I've been doing uh, kind of intermittently, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, so if you're triggered by talk like this, now would probably be the time to um, maybe uh, stop watching because um, I've talked about my weight um, and bless folk, folk always say you don't look overweight and it's not about necessarily how I look to other people, it's about how I look to me and how I feel about me, very important. So although those thoughts are nice and you know, it's like, well, well, cheers. It doesn't change how I feel about me, how I think about me. And I don't like me weight wise at the weight I'm at now. But as you know, there's been a, I mean, the last two years I've been a mess. They've been a mess, really. We, we, we're just kind of at the, we're just over the two year anniversary, it was March 2020 when the first lockdown started and everything changed. Um, so anyway, now that the world is normalising again, uh, I decided to try intermittent fasting, which some days means uh, skipping breakfast, other days means skipping breakfast and lunch. Um, and I have lost a couple of pound uh, already. And I'm still doing my 10, 10, 10 on the bike and you know, the press ups and the, the sit ups. So it is having more of an effect and I'll keep you uh, posted on that. I am still, e e trust me when I say the days that I go without uh, breakfast and lunch, I've done two so far in the last two weeks so you know they're nothing major but bag goodness to enjoy my dinner <laughs> um mostly i've been kind of skipping breakfast and then having a late lunch somewhere between two and four and then having a dinner so the actual window of eating and digesting is is quite short um, and you know it's something that I, will, I am going to continue doing moving forward because it's it's something that I found I can do it does help me to control my eating because if I have breakfast by half ten I'm hungry for a snack by half twelve I'm starving for my lunch in the afternoon I want a snack you know, and I've, I've had to get in control of, the, uh, of that. And this has been a good way of doing that. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. it all mad, uh, Ashley would talk about not so long, about one meal a day, where you have a really kind of good, nutrient dense, beautiful meal at some point. Um, so anyway, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that and it's, uh, it's going well and um, I, it, I'll keep you posted uh, on that. Um, I'm just looking at the time because it usually, it's a very strange camera. It's, it like records in 30 minute segments but at 24 minutes it breaks into a new six minute segment and then it stops. So you've got a 24 minute segment and a six minute segment. So I'm trying to get it. I mean, we're on 21 and a half now. So I'll stop, have a little break, and then I'll come back um, like this. It's partly bewitched, partly Phoebe from Friends when she thinks she's changing and totally doing it at the TV channel. Uh, do you remember the remote control episode? There you go. So, um, another uh, 
and you owe me darling think you are another uh, quick subject I wanted to talk about is uh, job hunting because I've um, <coughs> reworked my CV and got out there on a couple of websites and uh, stuff not looking for any help or advice or anything I, I just wanted to share with you that I'm kind of getting myself back out there on the market I would love to do support work again it's the favorite work I've ever done um, and I am looking and applying in that field and kind of feeling quite confident to job hunt which is something I haven't been able to say for a long time uh, and that's a fact and what I've also started to do is do some mail outs for the vegan queens just get particularly to prides which is one of our favorite things to do just kind of saying hi after an horrific two years for all of us here we are look at us we're quite shiny we sing well we're thinny the mats they were thinny good job good job mate um so yeah uh, so there's on the work front um I mean, I would love to be doing this full time, but it's not realistic right now. It's been ordered to the cosmos. Um, sat waiting at the table, but I can be working while I'm sat waiting at the table. You know what I mean? So uh, that's all kind of like, particularly after the last two years, <clears throat> um, that's all really good stuff. And that's all stuff I'm really kind of pleased with. And I'm pleased... Um, I'm not, I feel like I don't have to lambast myself. I'm, I'm getting control of the things I can control. I can seek work, I can fast. I can talk when things feel really heavy and it's important to do that and to kind of share, not the burden, but acknowledge the weight that all of us are carrying. Um, and we can't unburden ourselves of that but what we can do is we can be kind to each other. We can be nice to each other. Doesn't make you gay. <laughs> That's to the, the TM brigade out there, the toxic masculinity brigade. Because there is still a thing, isn't there, that kind of empathy and kindness and warmth and compassion are all um, feminine traits. And if they are, they're feminine traits every man should carry. Um, so I, you know, I do uh, realise as well that um, the uh, other than our kind of, uh, other than our um, allotment vlogs, uh, which are virtually guaranteed weekly, our meals vlogs, which are virtually guaranteed weekly, and our live, which is virtually guaranteed weekly, I. And I'm owning this, have kind of gone off the boil a bit when it comes to kind of actual recipes and fun cooking videos and things to inspire people to do more in the kitchen. And I promise to get back on that, but I'm dealing with all of this personal stuff first. A job is top priority, whether that be Vegan Queen's work or other work, top priority because um, I'm, I'll be brutally honest with you we are still very much um, always into the overdraft at the end of the month and you guys see our lives we're not big spenders we don't go out every week we have um, very few luxuries um, I, because yeah, life and it's about to get even harder so you know uh, it, it's I'd like us not to be in the red at the end of every month I'd like not to be worrying that um, you know it, those couple of bits we get from Sainsbury's might take us over our overdraft these are the realities of life I want you the reason I'm sharing that with you is because I know that that kind of stuff affects a lot of you out there too and I want you to know yeah us too you know, uh, people think when you're uh, YouTubers with nearly 14,000 subs uh, that there's a huge amount of money in it. 
there really is and and if it wasn't for, for you channel members and our patrons there would literally be virtually nothing in it there would be less than 50 pound a month in it um i think I, but you you channel members and you patrons you're the ones that have really been the support network that has meant we've been able to carry on doing this whilst i've been not in the right place to look for work um but those things kind of uh, have to ch have to uh, change now and i'm happy with that but i will promise to get back on the ball a bit with more kind of recipe vlogs and stuff like that now i don't give you i'm not like i'll do it by next week it's on my radar it absolutely is uh it's it's on a to-do list and i will get to uh ticking it off at um some point um the uh, allotment i feel is going to be an absolutely amazing year that's just how i feel uh, i think that the last work year of work that we put into the plot has re really paid off she's not at peak performance she's far better than she was she's far healthier than she was and hopefully that makes her far more able to uh, grow and nourish a huge bounty of different things this year and I'm really really excited about it and I love that we have that space to go to and forget about it all and I realize that that's a huge luxury and I never take it for granted not ever and I realize how lucky and privileged we are to have that place because not everybody does um, I mean, some people don't even have uh, a, a home, do they? It's um, this um, the, the, one of the biggest weights at the moment, I, I suppose, for me personally. And I kind of will not allow myself the luxury of switching off from it because uh, because I'm because I do have the privilege of safety and security and a, a home, a, for now at least, you know, I do have all these things, so I don't want to switch off from the people who are going through turmoil in the world. I mean, you couldn't switch off from it if you're a news reader, a, a news watcher. <clears throat> I don't watch it all the time, but I do like to keep abreast. I like to keep aware of what is um, happening out there. And I suppose that's one of the things that kind of uh, triggered my uh, downward spiral and my need to talk this morning. Um, massive trigger warning. Massive trigger warning. What I'm about to say is horrible. But I saw it on a new segment this morning. And I do not, I can't attest to its weight. And I certainly cannot attest to its factual, whether it is or not. But I can't see why anyone one would. So I'm about to start talking about it if you can't handle it but these are the things that jump on me and I'm like I cannot deal with that how as a human being living on earth am I supposed to process that and accept that that's happened uh, it's the story of um, apparently uh, um, 15 year old girl who was uh, captured with her mother by Russian forces 
and um, she was locked in a room with her mother who had been badly beaten and slowly bled to death over 10 days with her daughter lying at the side of her 15 year old daughter who was raped by Russian soldiers who filmed it the only reason I'm not crying my eyes out right now is because I already did and I'm trying to process that because I can't handle the fact that human beings can do these things to each other just like I can't handle the fact of what human beings do to animals it's heavy shit man how are we supposed to process and accept that that is a that all the world is watching whilst these things happen knowing that the reasons being given for this incredible mass destruction are bullshit utter unadulterated megalomaniac psychotic bullshit but it's okay because they're having another meeting about it <laughs> and here we are the fuck is going on man it's and the amount of young people in the world right now that are looking at the world right now that believe this is an acceptable world that are being made to believe that everything that's going on now is oh this is what happens in the world what have we done like collectively all of us what have we done what have we allowed to happen And it's always the same, isn't it? The people at the very top know that the people underneath them are in their tribes. So all you've got to do is tell this tribe that that tribe is the cause of all the problems and they get away with everything. And I just hope that at some point, because I don't know what the hell to do about that. I can see it plain as day I can see that modern day politics is very broken and needs a drastic overhaul the world over I can see that capitalism hasn't really worked the way we wanted it to and so a change is needed I can see that the fear mongering about socialism runs so deep and the comparisons to communism are ridiculous and I can see that socialism which is the nearest definition of the nearest thing that I believe in can actually work needs tweaking but if all those people in that building can throw that art up one level at a time and get it back to its owner the world can sort its shit out nobody was asking each other what tribe they were from they just helped look for the helpers there will always be people I think <laughs> gets me every time oh Mr Rogers mum said that to him
What a beautiful thing to say to your child when, when your child is scared. Look for the helpers. There will always be people helping. I'll do that. Right, I'm going to end this one. I've talked that much, that much about a horrible um, incident at the Oscars. And yet, the most beautiful incident incident I haven't even mentioned yet because um, it got hidden amongst all the not so good stuff but um, there was a moment when um, Liza Minnelli and Lady Gaga came out to uh, give an award and did you know it's the 50th anniversary of Cabaret? Wow. How amazing was Liza in Cabaret, though? Amazing. And Stepping Out, they're two of her films that I love so, so much. Stepping Out was a play, you know, became a film. Anyway, um, was Cabaret a play first? Do you know it possibly was? I don't know. I don't know. Of course it was. Of course it was a musical first, stunt stage. I'm quite sure of it. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Liza Minnelli and Lady Gaga came out. And uh, Liza, bless her, cotton socks. She's in a wheelchair now. She's still trying her best to look fabulous. And you know what, she's succeeding, she looks great. But she's obviously, she's like me, in the supermarket. Jason read that label for me. She was trying to read the um, the card saying what they were about to talk about. And she got it a little bit wrong. Um, and Lady Gaga just kind of, oh, I have to say first, Lady Gaga gave her a, an amazing introduction. Like, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Get up, this is Liza Minnelli. 50 years ago, she made cabaret. Uh, Oscar winner, get up, do you know what I mean? Uh, and she was looking at her in such awe, she really was. Anyway, Li Liza struggled a bit to read the, the little bit of the card she was reading, so um, Lady Gaga helped her clarify what it actually said. And um, Liza was just like giggling a little bit and trying to kind of, you know, play off that she was having a difficult time reading it. And then the the bit that was that should have been magnified a thousand times more. Lady Gaga put her arm on uh, her hand on Lasmino's arm. I mean, it was there anyway, and just said, "I got you." And Liza Minnelli said, I know. That is so beautiful. Do you need more of that? More of that good stuff in the world. It's so beautiful. I got you. I know. Oh. It sends a lovely jelly tingles right down my spine. Nice ones though, good ones. The kind you want. So I'm clinging to that moment. I'm clinging to that moment. That, that was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. <sighs> and it's nice to cry a tear occasionally that comes from something beautiful rather than something horrific. You know. <laughs> anyway. That was my classic um, Keanu Reeves moment from Parenthood, uh, where he's uh, in the kitchen talking to uh, his girlfriend's mum, and they're talking about fatherhood. And he's, he, it's his deepest moment in the film. And he says, um, "You know, you you need a license to to drive a car." You need a license to own a dog. Hell, you need a, drive, a license to catch a fish. But they'll let any asshole be a father. 
and then he kind of goes Bull! and turns back into his ditchy self it was it, I love that film by the way Parenthood it's a beautiful film Ron Howard directed it incredible cast Diane Vice Mary Steenburgen um, Steve Martin Rick Moranis and on and on um, I used to watch, I've given you a false ending, I used to watch films that made me smile like Garbo Talks and Parenthood and Mystic Pizza and oh, The Railway Children, films that warm my heart and remind me of how beautiful human beings can be. I used to watch them a lot more than I do now and I think that's probably why things affect me more than they used to. Or maybe I'm just more aware of them all the time. Um, so yeah, maybe I should watch more of the films that make me smile and make me, you know. But I don't want to hide in that world and pretend like that world exists. Because broadly gestures at everything. I will go now. Thank you so much for allowing me to prattle in my kitchen. I honestly feel better for it. I really do. I will continue to try through whatever means I have at my disposal. Be that through talking or writing or vlogging or highlighting or sharing I will try continually to aim for the world where a huge crowd of people throwing a hat up to its owner doesn't make me cry because it's standard that's the world I want to live in I got you. Please no. I know you've got me and Jason and Isis and I couldn't thank you more if I tried. I love you. Let's say that a bit more shall we? I love you. Thank you so so much for watching my vl vlog. Thank you for giving me a chance to talk to you in my kitchen about the things that are burdening me. Thank you for helping me relieve some of that weight. I love you. Thank you. Ah, and I will see you again very, very soon. Until then, please be excellent to yourself and each other. I love